I think this will make a pretty interesting video because I plan on using some relatively different techniques. What I've done is I've taken a piece of one inch hard maple stock and I've traced out a couple of spoons onto it. The first obstacle to consider when making a spoon is how to make this concave portion. Obviously that's not going to be simple with conventional woodworking strategies or tools. I have no interest in whittling, so I started to experiment with this device. And you can see that its back and forth motion makes this nice sort of concave elliptical shape. When you look up close you can see what its back and forth motion does. And you can imagine the type of shape that it makes. This device was invented by NoHo91. I think you can find it by searching for wave pattern shaver or something similar to that. But I've been experimenting with this device and I've found some pretty neat applications for it. I don't really have the correct bit for this procedure to make the concave portion nice and smooth. I've just been using this round nose bit. And so without sacrificing one of my existing router bits by chopping it apart, I'm just going to have to make do with what I have, and I'll get through it with some sanding. One of the ideas that I've been playing with recently is to install this device on a bearing like this, and then its back and forth motion would make a perfect portion of a sphere. But this maybe will be for a later video. Before I proceed, I should probably mention that this is not intended to be a spoon making tutorial. I've never even made a spoon before, and even if I was making a spoon making tutorial, I probably wouldn't recommend any of these techniques for doing it. So before I begin, I would like to introduce you to this device that I just picked up recently, and I found it to be very handy for woodworking. What it is is a variable speed knob, and it works great in situations like this with this old-fashioned router that I guess they didn't believe in variable speed at the time, so by today's standards this router would really be useless without this. You can imagine since I'm using hard maple for this video just how useful this will be. I should also point out that I've found a lot of uses for this device. I especially think it's useful for palm sanders because sometimes it's really nice to tone down how aggressive palm sanders run. I would also like to try using this device on my bandsaw, but I'm a little afraid. I think it'll take a little more research before I can determine that it's safe to use on the bandsaw's motor. If anybody out there watching this video knows about such things, please drop a comment and let me know. Looking down into the device, you can see that I drew a rough approximation of what I'd like to route out. And also I drew this line that's perpendicular to the spoon itself. I used a framing square to determine that line. Also you can see that on the inside of my device I have these little pencil marks on the side of it and that allows me to place it along the perpendicular line to make sure that I'm square. The clamping setup that I came up with uses this fence here that applies pressure to the board that I want to route. And this will go up against the fence and it allows it to move back and forth. The first route that I make is going to take the smallest amount of material obviously. So as I move in towards the center of the spoon where it's deeper, I'll restrict its motion more. Now for my second pass, I've moved each of my stop blocks in towards the spoon an eighth of an inch, and also I've lowered the depth on my router bit an eighth of an inch.
Well, every step of the way I moved my blocks in towards the center one eighth of an inch and I would lower the router's depth an eighth of an inch and I did that about four times until I got to the middle. Right now at the dead center I have about a third of an inch in depth which is not quite deep enough and I'll give you a better close up here. You can see that I also didn't make it the whole way to my lines. So I'm going to have to move my fence back and then move it forward and do each of these with another setup. So as to whether or not this is practical from a time perspective, probably not, but the device is pretty entertaining to use so I have no objections this far. Well nothing really makes you better at something like practice and I think this is one of those things where judgment makes you a lot better. As I went along, the more that I did, the better I started to understand how the device works. But now I'm just using the drum sander to take some of these ridges away. Honestly, it seems like you could do more damage with the drum sander than with the device that I was using. This really takes some finesse. Well, that was quite a learning experience, but after some hand sanding, it turned out really nicely. I wish I would have went a little bit deeper, but I will on the second spoon, which I'm not going to show you until it's done. But maple does a really nice job of sanding. You can get it like a piece of glass if you have the patience. But because this has taken so long, I'm going to end this video now and make a second part later. Thanks a lot for watching.